U.S. companies regularly access data about employees and customers from the European Union. The process used by many U.S. companies to do this was ruled unlawful recently, leaving companies needing to access data from the EU exposed to penalties for breaching data privacy laws. What can companies do now to deal with that change and stay on the right side of the EU data privacy laws? That's today on Liability Watch. Welcome to Liability Watch. I'm Susie Higby. Many U.S. companies have used a self-certification process run by the Department of Commerce to make sure that in accessing data from the European Union about employees, customers, and other individuals, they and their subsidiaries are not breaching EU data privacy laws. In an October 2015 judgment, the Court of Justice of the European Union found that companies relying on this process to transfer data from the EU to the U.S. would be breaching EU data privacy law and exposing themselves to penalties in the EU. Today, we will hear from Nick Burkill, a specialist attorney at Dorsey & Whitney's LLP London office. He'll explain what has happened and what companies need to be doing. Nick? Thanks, Susie. The European Union has as a fundamental right the protection of personal data, that is, data relating to individuals, which is such an extensive definition that it includes emails that name an individual. European data protection laws place obligations on organisations that hold personal data in the EU that are designed to protect that data from abuse. And one of those protections is to forbid the transfer of that data out of the EU to countries that the EU considers have a lower level of protection for personal data than the EU. One of those countries identified by the EU as having lower standards of protection is the United States, with the result that transfer of personal data from the EU to the US, including accessing of that data from the US, is forbidden unless special safeguards have been put in place to protect the data in the US. One of the ways in which US companies complied with the law by safeguarding personal data transferred to the US was to use what's called the safe harbor negotiated between the EU and the US under which companies could sign up with the Department of Commerce to certify that they would provide similar protection to personal data than that provided in the EU. But following Edward Snowden's revelations of the mass surveillance of personal data by the US security services, an Austrian national, Dr. Schrems, challenged the transfer of data by Facebook from Ireland to the US. It was judgment in that case that was delivered in October. The court ruled that the US safe harbor procedure was invalid and did not provide the necessary level of protection for EU personal data in the US. Over 4,000 companies have registered with the Department of Commerce to take advantage of the safe harbor process. These are all vulnerable to actions by the authorities in individual European member states. Probably the most extreme response to the Schrems case has been from the German authorities, and one of the more sympathetic responses has been from the UK. But all recognise that transfers of personal data reliant only on the safe harbour provisions are no longer lawful. The immediate answer for many companies will lie with two alternatives both of which are provided for under existing EU legislation. First, approved form agreements called model clauses exist for use between the EU entity transferring the data and the US entity receiving it, by which the US entity takes responsibility for the protection of the data. Secondly, where companies in the EU and the US are members of the same group, then binding corporate rules can be introduced governing the protection of personal data held within the group. The problem with these rules is that they need to be approved by a data protection authority in the EU, so this is not an instantaneous solution, and approval could now be withheld. This is because the reasoning behind the court's decision striking down the safe harbour provisions applies equally to binding corporate rules and to approved form data transfer agreements. On the one hand, the European legislation providing for binding corporate rules and approved form agreements remains in full force and would need to be struck down or withdrawn for these bases of transfer to become unlawful. But on the other hand, in some countries, the data protection authorities need to approve model clauses as well as corporate rules, and that approval may be withheld. There are alternatives for particular circumstances, such as where the transfer of personal data is necessary for litigation in the US, or where the subjects of the personal data consent to the transfer. 
but these don't solve a broader need for transfers. For companies that have that need, their alternatives to model clauses and binding corporate rules are reorganizing their processes so as to keep their data in the EU or relying on the successful outcome of long-standing negotiations between the EU and the US. That's why the simplest alternatives for companies needing to transfer personal data from the EU to the US are either the binding corporate rules or the approved forms of data transfer agreements. And companies need to get on and put these in place if they're transferring personal data from the EU to the US and either have nothing in place or are presently relying on the old safe harbor provisions because we can expect to see enforcement actions starting in the new year. Thank you, Nick. To request a copy of Dorsey & Whitney's no-cost data transfer checklist, follow the link on your screen. If you'd like more information on Dorsey's compliance and litigation prevention solutions, contact Nick or visit Dorsey.com. I'm Susie Higby for Liability Watch. Thanks for watching.